Now, family, let's be honest. This Bethune cooking situation is difficult. Me and other content creators, especially Tomorrow Leader Sports Network, told you all, even before the Ed Reed signing or the hiring that didn't happen, that Bethune Cookman was going to be a tough job for anyone that took it. So much so that Ed Reed should have known before taking the job. And this is not me trying to go at Ed Reed or nothing. He's a Hall of Famer. I get all that. I'm just telling you how tough this job is. So it takes uh, a level of resolve, composure, to handle this type of adversity. But when I saw the video of the players talking to the former alums, football players that is, some of them played in the NFL, seeing that assured me that Bethune Cookman is going to find the right guy. And I chime in. What's good, everyone? This is Raw Truth Media giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Please like and share this video throughout all social media platforms. I got to admit, the strategy that Bethune Cookman just did, and if you didn't see the video, this was perfect. The intern AD brought in former Bethune Cookman players. Some of them have played in the NFL. And has made a great living. They were all there speaking to the players. About the vision of Bethune Cookman. A lot of stuff. The media didn't even pick up on. The fact that they're going to put three million dollars. To improve the locker rooms and facilities. At Bethune. None of them knew it. They didn't care to ask. All they cared about. Drama and chaos. This is what old media thrives on. They're not about finding answers. Now, one person asked if the university received any funds from FEMA. Knowing that Bethune Cookman dealt with two hurricanes. You know how tough that is? Or any plans on adding things new to the infrastructure of their university? No, they just wanted to talk about how Bethune is poor. Like they have no history. When there's a lot of successful people alumni that went to that school. What we should talk about is who's going to be the next head coach. Will it be Sam Washington? Will it be a head coach uh, that was an assistant at a winning program and just needed a shot? Or will they find another celebrity coach? Who knows? But signing day is approaching. But there's one good thing about this new transfer portal era. There are enough talented athletes, suitable athletes, that's in that portal. And they will still be in the portal after signing day. And for those who are just waiting to get a better offer, they're going to soak up their pride. And go to FCS school. So whoever is the new head coach. I expect them. To go into the portal. Effective immediately. So all is not lost. Before I go. I want to show you all. The clip of that meeting. If you haven't seen it. And if you have any questions. 
Leave your comment on the comment section. Here it is. Because the love of this school, this athletic program here, and the love of you guys, you need to hear this. You need to hear from men that are successful, that came from the same cut that you are from, that you are living now. Other alums in attendance were former NFL players Rasheen Mathis, Nick Collins, and Alvin Wyatt Sr., who, as most of you know, led the Wildcats for several years as coach. What a week, dream killer! What a week, dream killer! What time is it? Game time! What time is it? Game time! What time is it? Game time! The first order of business was to make clear that the university is moving forward with hiring a new football coach. And the final decision was is that we were not going to continue negotiating Ed Reed's contract. And we're not going to go back to that. We have a number of coaches that we're going, to, we're going to name a coach within the next 10 days. We have a couple of really great candidates who are coming to campus, of which one of you, or a couple of you, will be able to interview that coach as well. It's the first time that we've ever done that. But I want players or at least a couple of players to be able to talk to their colleagues, their teammates, about what it means to hire a coach, what that means. A player representative said he understood the president's decision, and then he had his teammates stand in solidarity. Concerns included better nutrition, sharing helmets and cleats, more qualified trainers, inadequate locker rooms and showers, and the need for a quality training facility. We all got our own stories, and we all got, and I understand y'all's stories is deep, but we all got our stories, you know. President Drake, who attended because every football been, game last season, agreed with many of the concerns. When I went to the stadium, I was embarrassed at what I saw in the locker rooms. Now, I didn't know much about sharing helmets. I didn't know about the mold on helmets. I didn't know about, you know, the sharing of cleats. I didn't have any idea about those things, because I couldn't know those things. In fact, some of it I learned today for the first time. So I said, okay, fine. We got to do something about the program. Coach Thea said that plans are already underway to create an on-campus practice field, and also... They're putting $3 million into the stadium locker rooms. They're going to redo the entire stadium locker rooms. So you'll have those two things by August. And you can hold that, you can hold myself and President Drake accountable for that. President Drake said that other issues would be dealt with, but he also said he expects better results from the team and better conduct from each player. You had a two and nine season last year and you can't blame it on Coach Sims. Everybody in this room played a season, I watched you, every game. So let's be real here, and I want you to be good students. I don't want to see you kicking doors in that I have to repair. I don't want to see you leaving trash on your floor, which ends up being the worst floor in a dormitory or residence hall. I get complaints all the time from other students about my student athletes. And I make an excuse for them sometimes, but other times I don't have anything. What I'm saying to you is that you want stuff, we want stuff. We want an excellent group of young men to go out here and excel in life, period. That's what we want. That's the bottom line. And since you play athletics as a way for you to do that, then we want you to be good athletes and we got to know, we know that what we have today, it ain't working. It's not good enough. Then it was time for the NFL professionals to offer their words of advice and encouragement. So what we saying, everything that was is not what was going to be. So that's what we need y'all to understand. That what was is not going to be. So what Doc was saying, he needs something from y'all. Just like y'all need something from him. He needs something from y'all. So commit yourselves. Fire and desire. So get ready, gentlemen. Get ready. Get ready to believe in yourself as you never, ever, ever believe in anything else before in your life. It will happen. I don't care if you're trying to make a good season better or change a terrible one. Before you, before you finish this year, I want you to know this. Because this president, this athletic director, will take you through this charge. 
But y'all want to sit here and shake y'all head like y'all already know what's going on. Y'all don't. Y'all don't know how to survive out there yet, bro. Y'all don't. It's going to take time. Understand it. Listen. Listen before you speak. I was the third highest paid rookie on our team and the highest paid rookie free agent in the National Football League for the first three years that I played. That came because of my education. I knew how to negotiate. Because if you can maneuver through Bethune Cookman University, you can definitely make it anywhere. <laughs> By the end of the meeting, a united spirit had erupted. I definitely think that they, they are for the students, they are for the players, and they're trying to do what's best for us and still align with a business professional standpoint. And I'm, I'm, due, I'm hopeful for the future, and I see 